Today's reading begins in 1 Kings, chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Now the days of David came near that he should die, and he commanded Solomon his son, saying, I am going the way of all the earth. You be strong, therefore, and show yourself a man, and keep the instruction of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his ordinances, and his testimonies, according to that which is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do, and wherever you turn yourself. Then the Lord may establish his word which he spoke concerning me, saying, If your children are careful of their way, to walk before me in truth, with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail you, he said, a man on the throne of Israel. Moreover, you know also what Joab the son of Zeruiah did to me, even what he did to the two captains of the armies of Israel, to Abner the son of Ner, and to Amasa the son of Jether, whom he killed, and shed the blood of war in peace, and put the blood of war on his sash that was around his waist, and in his sandals that were on his feet. Do therefore according to your wisdom, and don't let his gray head go down to Sheol in peace. But show kindness to the sons of Barzillai the Gileadite, and let them be amongst those who eat at your table, for so they came to me when I fled from Absalom your brother." Behold, there is with you Shammai the son of Gera, the Benjamite of Baharim, who cursed me with a grievous curse in the day when I went to Mahanaim. But he came down to meet me at the Jordan, and I swore to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put you to death with the sword. Now therefore don't hold him guiltless, for you are a wise man, and you will know what you ought to do to him, and you shall bring his gray head down to Sheol with blood. David slept with his fathers, and was buried in David's city, the days that David reigned over Israel were forty years. He reigned seven years in Hebron, and he reigned thirty-three years in Jerusalem. Solomon sat on David his father's throne, and his kingdom was firmly established. Then Adonijah the son of Haggith came to Bathsheba the mother of Solomon. She said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. He said, Moreover, I have something to tell you. She said, Say on. He said, You know that the kingdom was mine, and that all Israel set their faces on me, that I should reign. However, the kingdom is turned around, and has become my brother's, for it was his from the Lord. Now I ask one petition of you, don't deny me. She said to him, Say on. He said, Please speak to Solomon the king, for he will not tell you no, that he give me Abishag the Shunammite as wife. Bathsheba said, All right, I will speak for you to the king. Bathsheba therefore went to King Solomon to speak to him for Adonijah. The king rose up to meet her, and bowed himself to her, and sat down on his throne, and caused a throne to be set for the king's mother, and she sat on his right hand. Then she said, I ask one small petition of you, don't deny me. The king said to her, Ask on my mother, for I will not deny you. She said, Let Abishag the Shunammite be given to Adonijah your brother as wife. King Solomon answered his mother, Why do you ask Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? Ask for him the kingdom also, for he is my elder brother, even for him, and for Abiathar the priest, and for Joab the son of Zeruiah. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, saying, God do so to me, and more also, if Adonijah has not spoken this word against his own life. Now therefore, as the Lord lives, who has established me, and set me on my father David's throne, and who has made me a house, as he promised, surely Adonijah shall be put to death today. King Solomon sent Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and he fell on him, so that he died. To Abiathar the priest, the king said, Go to Anathoth, to your own fields, for you are worthy of death. But I will not at this time put you to death, because you bore the Lord God's ark before David my father, and because you were afflicted in all in which my father was afflicted. So Solomon thrust Abiathar out from being priest to the Lord, that he might fulfill the Lord's words which he spoke concerning the house of Eli in Shiloh. The news came to Joab, for Joab had followed Adonijah, although he didn't follow Absalom. Joab fled to the Lord's tent, and held onto the horns of the altar. King Solomon was told, Joab has fled to the Lord's tent, and behold, he is by the altar. Then Solomon sent Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, saying, Go, fall on him. Benaiah came to the Lord's tent, and said to him, The king says, Come out. He said, No, but I will die here. 
Benaiah brought the king word again, saying, This is what Joab said, and this is how he answered me. The king said to him, Do as he has said, and fall on him, and bury him, that you may take away the blood, which Joab shed without cause, from me and from my father's house. The Lord will return his blood on his own head, because he fell on two men more righteous and better than he, and killed them with the sword, and my father David didn't know it. Abner the son of Ner, captain of the army of Israel, and Amasa the son of Jether, captain of the army of Judah. So their blood will return on the head of Joab and on the head of his offspring forever. But for David, for his offspring, for his house, and for his throne, there will be peace forever from the Lord. Then Benaiah the son of Jehoiada went up and fell on him, and killed him, and he was buried in his own house in the wilderness. The king put Benaiah the son of Jehoiada in his place over the army, and the king put Zadok the priest in the place of Abiathar. The king sent and called for Shammai, and said to him, Build yourself a house in Jerusalem, and live there, and don't go anywhere else. For on the day you go out and pass over the brook Kidron, know for certain that you will surely die. Your blood will be on your own head. Shammai said to the king, What you say is good. As my lord the king has said, so will your servant do. Shammai lived in Jerusalem many days. At the end of three years, two of Shammai's slaves ran away to Achish, son of Makkah, king of Gath. They told Shammai, saying, Behold, your slaves are in Gath. Shammai arose, saddled his donkey, and went to Gath to Achish to seek his slaves. And Shammai went and brought his slaves from Gath. Solomon was told that Shammai had gone from Jerusalem to Gath, and had come again. The king sent and called for Shammai, and said to him, Didn't I adjure you by the Lord, and warn you, saying, Know for certain that on the day you go out and walk anywhere else, you shall surely die? You said to me, The saying that I have heard is good. Why then have you not kept the oath of the Lord and the commandment that I have instructed you with? The king said moreover to Shammai, You know in your heart all the wickedness that you did to David my father. Therefore the Lord will return your wickedness on your own head. But King Solomon will be blessed, and David's throne will be established before the Lord forever. So the king commanded Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and he went out and fell on him so that he died. The kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. Solomon made a marriage alliance with Pharaoh king of Egypt. He took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into David's city until he had finished building his own house, the Lord's house, and the wall around Jerusalem. However, the people sacrificed in the high places, because there was not yet a house built for the Lord's name. The Book of Acts, Chapter 5, starting in verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, and kept back part of the price, his wife also being aware of it, then brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit, and to keep back part of the price of the land? While you kept it, didn't it remain your own? After it was sold, wasn't it in your power? How is it that you have conceived this thing in your heart? You haven't lied to men, but to God. Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and died. Great fear came on all who heard these things. The young men arose and wrapped him up, and they carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife, not knowing what had happened, came in. Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, Yes, for so much. But Peter asked her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. She fell down immediately at his feet and died. The young men came in and found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her by her husband. Great fear came on the whole assembly, and on all who heard these things. By the hands of the apostles many signs and wonders were done amongst the people. They were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. None of the rest dared to join them. However, the people honored them. More believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. They even carried out the sick into the streets, and laid them on cots and mattresses, so that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might overshadow some of them. The multitude also came together from the cities around Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with jealousy, and laid hands on the apostles, then put them in public custody. But an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors by night, and brought them out, and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. 
When they heard this, they entered into the temple about daybreak and taught. But the high priest and those who were with him came and called the council together with all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But the officers who came didn't find them in the prison. They returned and reported, We found the prison shut and locked, and the guards standing before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priests heard these words, they were very perplexed about them and what might become of this. One came and told them, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are in the temple, standing and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they were afraid that the people might stone them. When they had brought them, they set them before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, Didn't we strictly command you not to teach in this name? Behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and intend to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you killed, hanging him on a tree. God exalted him with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance to Israel and remission of sins. We are as witnesses of these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. But they, when they heard this, were cut to the heart and were determined to kill them. But one stood up in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, honored by all the people, and commanded to put the apostles out for a little while. He said to them, You men of Israel, be careful concerning these men, what you are about to do. For before these days Thutis rose up, making himself out to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves. He was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were dispersed and came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the enrollment, and drew away some people after him. He also perished, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered abroad. Now I tell you, withdraw from these men and leave them alone. For if this counsel or this work is of men, it will be overthrown. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow it, and you would be found even to be fighting against God. They agreed with him. Summoning the apostles, they beat them and commanded them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go. They therefore departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for Jesus' name. Every day in the temple and at home, they never stopped teaching and preaching Jesus, the Christ. Psalm 125 Starting in verse 1, Those who trust in the Lord are as Mount Zion, which can't be moved, but remains forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, from this time forward and forevermore. For the scepter of wickedness won't remain over the allotment of the righteous, so that the righteous won't use their hands to do evil. Do good, Lord, to those who are good, to those who are upright in their hearts. But as for those who turn away to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with the workers of iniquity. Peace be on Israel. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. There is a way which seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Mm -hmm.